All right, uh, week seven, day three, last day of spring break. Oh my God, that flew by. Uh, so today, again, I did another 30 minutes on the treadmill uh, with a seven incline and three speed. Um, following that, I did floor bridges for three sets of 10, box squats for three sets of 10, single leg deadlifts for three sets of 10, goblet squats, and good mornings. Um, all had 30 seconds of rest in between. Again, this focus is kind of on like a recovery, lighter weight, um, more mobility training than anything. And then trying to go back and summarize everything back up again. We did the blood flow through the heart last. So now I'll do the SA node, which is the um, 100 beats per minute regulates our heart rate. It's usually located towards like the top of the um, right atrium. So uh, arterial depolarization is initiated by the SA node, which causes the P wave. Um, then we kind of have that break um, and space between the P wave where we're hitting that dead cell layer and that is activating the AV node to send that signal down the bundle of his, um, which is that delay. Then the QRS complex is the ventricular depolarization, which begins at the apex, um, causes that squeeze up um, and then Ventricular depolarization is complete during that little break before the T wave, and then you have your repolarization, which is your T wave, and then after that, we start the process all over again. Um, so then we have our, our cardiac output again. How would we measure this? So we have our Q, which is our cardiac output, equals heart rate um, times SV, which is stroke volume. So your heart rate is regulated by your SNS and PNS. So you have like your norepinephrine, um, epinephrine, which are going to be that increasing your heart rate, which is going to be your accelerator nerve. Um, you have your vagus nerve, which is going to decrease. It's going to slow down your heart rate. Um, and then you have your stroke volume. Your stroke volume is going to be your preload, um, which is also Frank Sterling's, which is the greater the stretch, greater the squeeze. Then you have your contractility, how well that muscle or heart is able to contract. And then you have your afterload, which is the back pressure on your aortic valve that all influence kind of the cardiac output or the amount of blood we're able to send through systemic circulation. Um, then we have like our mechanics of breathing. So you have our bulk flow, which is the difference in pressure gradients of when we inhale all the way and how much oxygen is being um, Put on the alveoli which is then being transferred to the heme groups and then which that's also your inspiration your expiration expiration gets rid of co2 um, so the o2 will bind to the heme you got four um, little kind of clovers on each heme so you're able to carry four oxygen molecules and then co2 will come in also be bound to be carried out go out through expiration you have your oxy hemoglobin dis dissociation curve so um, obviously the more we work, the more that dissociation curve kind of goes down, the harder we work, the more it shifts to the right, um, the more we're trying to recover, the more it shifts to the left. Um, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to add before we start new stuff? Um, So obviously as our, our work crate um, increases, so will the oxygen um, um, uptake increase. So the more venatorily response we have, so the, the faster we breathe, the more oxygen we're able to intake, the more CO2 we're able to kind of get off. Um, and that'll kind of affect the, um, what's the word? I guess ability um, of exercise. So the more energy we're able to create from that, um, the more we're able to get rid of that CO2. And then, yeah, looking forward to next week's new content.